Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of Entertainment Expansion. We're your hosts, Tyler Callahan and Mike Ferrante. Mike, how are you doing this week? Well, Tyler, as always, I'm chilling. How Good. about yourself? Doing all right, doing all right. Well, it's, uh, well, we're just going to get right into it. You know, we're playing a little bit of catch up. We started off 2022 with poss- possibly one of the biggest bombs of 2021 and with Matrix uh, Resurrections, at least box office wise. A uh, very divisive film. One of the few films that has caused us to have a disagreement. Very polite one, but a disagreement nonetheless. Uh, usually we're in sync with these films, but we're going to take it easy this week. 2022 was a brand new year, brand new COVID variant. We got, hopefully, movies that will come out sometime this year. And look, anything is fair game. Morbius was supposed to be out three weeks. Everyone was really excited for Jerry Leto. And now it's April. So... The rule is it's got to be planned for a 2022 release, streaming, theaters. We'll see what happens. Uh, Mike, if it's all right, I'm going to start off with my number five. We're going to work our way up here. We each got five. We're cutting it down from 10. And we felt, you know, the last few years with 10 each was a bit too hectic. So for my number five pick, The Gray Man. Now you might be wondering, what the hell is that film? You're right. I am wondering that. It is, well, it's actually not great. It's two white people. But it is a Netflix spy thriller film with ryan gosling and chris evans ryan gosling is the cia agent on the run chris evans is the cia man that's out to get him so okay obviously it's been done a million times before spy thriller guy gets portrayed by his country or his agency and they travel around europe but it was was not called safe house it's called a bunch of movies (laughs) but yeah that's one of them uh but hey chris evans continuing his role of being an asshole or villain right from knives out now he's being the guy that's got to hunt down ryan gosling like he's the antagonist and you know ryan gosling in a more action film you know like he hasn't done that in a while what's his biggest film the past few years uh the uh, first man he's an astronaut la la land he's not punching anyone and you know blade runner was kind of actiony for like 10 minutes of the three-hour film so yeah to see him, you know, traveling, running around Europe with spy skills, I think it's going to be interesting. And they've already said it, Netflix is looking at this to be a franchise star. So this could be Ryan Gosling's action franchise for the next few years. And I'm looking forward to see if it pays out. Yeah, I mean, never really seen him in like an action role. I mean, kind of like Drive, but even then it was more of a slow burn with sprinkle of action. Because yeah. you could you could think about it back from uh, the nice guys. There's mm-hmm. a little bit of action in that movie, but he was more comical than anything yeah. else. Yeah, I mean, that, that's a dark comedy film. That's what it is. Yeah, it's not, yeah. It's not, it's not action. It's not thriller. That's true. Oh, what do you got? Well, this might surprise you, Tyler. It's a little movie not many people have heard of or are familiar with. It's uh, called Fantastic Beasts, The Secrets of Dumbledore. I'm just kind of surprised I made your list. Yeah. You know, it, I was kind of... <laughs> Yeah, um, I'm not coming at number six or something. It. It, it's close. It was battle and something else. Maybe Sonic too. Who knows? But I don't know. I I want to see where they're taking this now because now they have my curiosity with you know, uh, casting change, third movie in, in a, in a big way too. Not like a small casting change, like a side character, the main antagonist. Yeah, the, yeah, the main antagonist for the next three films. Yeah. The first three and the next three. Which, to be fair, if they were going to make a change, now's the time. Because, all right, let's assume they even finished the, the, the next three, the, the two films, four and five after this. If Mads Mikkelsen stays for the rest of the run, people will recognize Grindelwald more for him than Johnny Depp. You know, one film compared to, like, three. Yeah, it's true. But we're, well, that's a big assumption if they make it to Flash. Yeah, I, I feel like they might try to just wrap it up with this one at this point. The rumors I've heard is that the ending is kind of like it's kind of wrapped up. Like there are things they can do, like obviously show the big battle down the road, Dumbledore, Grindelwald. Yeah. But also if it bombs and they just kind of stop here, it's an okay trilogy. But I feel like you got you gotta get to the World War II aspect. You gotta get you gotta get to that duel. Because we're not we're not even talking about beasts. No. It's called Fantastic Beasts. Like Newt and the Beasts are a side character. In what's supposed to be their franchise. 
Yeah, I don't know why they just didn't start a whole Dumbledore franchise. I think that's what everyone wanted to begin with. Like Fantastic Beasts One was a great one off, mm-hmm. but then just have the balls to start. You know, a so, new so, so, let, so let me let me ask you why it's on the list besides the main casting change. Are you still excited about like I, I mean besides I assume you're still excited seeing Jude Law as Dumbledore, but like yeah, I mean, do, do you care about like what any new animals they could bring in, like? New tour. Well, I, I want to I want to finish the Dumbledore storyline. That's the main reason why. Okay, fair enough. And you know, let's see how the Choke Slammer does and a more actiony role as well, because you know he's going to go head to head with somebody. Yeah, maybe, maybe um, well, maybe Dumbledore can uh, put some manners in his what cousin now and choke slam him instead. Who who knows what the fuck this kid is, honestly. But uh, and yeah, I'm also trying to kind of curious on how they just kind of give. A wand to a muggle and just like yeah figure it out man maybe you got magic in it Who knows? I, I have seen people comment on that online quite a bit when the trailer dropped dude what is one thing we have known about dumbledore for years he fucks around with people he does who's to say he didn't give him a stick that he's shaped to look like a wand and has no powers whatsoever because i saw a theory online and it actually kind of makes sense as to why he would do this it's not a wand it just looks like one it's a it, it's a decoy why? Because Grindelwald is riling up wizards to hate on Muggles. So if he's going to go on missions with the other wizards, he needs to blend in. And what's the first question you're going to ask him? You have a wand? Yeah. So Dumbledore might be doing it just for his own protection if he's going to be out hanging out with Newt and his brother doing stuff. That's just yeah, a common sense, but everyone's freaking out like, well, he's, he's going to do magic. So like, oh, well, he could, what? Because you saw him sitting in that Hogwarts, really having food? Yeah. I didn't see him do a yeah. spell. The wand chooses the wizard. It's not always clear why. Mm-hmm. But that wand no. didn't necessarily choose him. Dumbledore's kind of like, here you go. Yes, wand in quotes. I'm going to assume it's a fake wand or Dumbledore did something special to it. Like, And I think that's fine. Now, if he starts just casting spells, levitating shit or transporting himself, it's like, all right, this is some bullshit. But I will give it the benefit of the doubt. Plot twist: The Muggle actually is the one who deals magic and kills Grindelwald, not not Dumbledore. <laughs> Dumbledore next, just took the all next the three films is his training and his rise to power and the finishing blow. He yep. kills he kills Grindelwald. <laughs> yep. Dumbledore stumbles power. and he's like, "I got you." Don't worry, you can take credit for this. Oh, I will. What a pal. <laughs> yep. So tell me about your number four, Tyler. All right, well, this one will actually be no shock to you or to anyone. It is uh, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Now, I'm a fan of the first Doctor Strange movie. It's one of the better origin films in the MCU, one of the better MCU films in general. Look, man, it's been almost six years since he's had his own movie. He's been a side character in others. Some, some parts better than others. He was great in Infinity War. Uh, Endgame, he's just holding up the water, man. He's, he's too powerful. So he's got to hold up water so it doesn't flood the battlefield. Don't know why they couldn't use that to their advantage, but sure, whatever. So yeah, to have his, his own proper sequel, and we've seen this with Loki, and you and me have talked about this. The multiverse is going to get weird. It got broken with Loki, and it's now starting to spiral out of control. Doctor Strange's going to have to deal with it. Uh, things, <laughs> stuff. Uh, and hey, look, one of it, you know, Wanda's there. Um, I'm going to Possibly assume. I'm, I'm going to assume a villain. I mean, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens. But like, if she's just a like goody two shoes hero in this after WandaVision, I'm going to be in the way. Yeah, I don't. I don't think that's happening. Yeah, I mean, you're telling me you're learning from this dark, evil, powerful book, and you're going to come out squeaky clean? Nah, I don't know. But uh, oh. hey, look, I'm looking for some great action. Sam Raimi is directing it. All right, so it should be. Pretty interesting. And look, the first trailer was pretty good. All right. They're bringing in the what if Supreme Strange, was. who's uh, at this point, I, you know, I've read a bit about it. He's like at first kind of evil, but misguided. And now he's like kind of slightly trying to redeem himself a little bit. But to be fair, where we see him in this movie, I don't know. Yeah. Unfortunately, not too much is known other than what the first trailer graced us with. Hey, at least we know what the movie looks like i'm like i don't know thor yeah it's another one well it's kind of like my number four the flash 
because we don't know jack shit about that movie other than it's uh gonna change the universe quite a bit michael keaton stays on as batman in two works that affleck is out and they're basically restarting the dc universe just shittily so i'm, I'm excited to see how they do it i want to see how they massacred my boy all right well you, you, i'm surprised it's on your list um as well uh yeah i mean we've, we've seen the recent leaks it's rumored obviously we don't know yet but uh yeah yeah uh we were excited when ben affleck was on set and he has a small role but as we feared it looks like they're just getting rid of him this is his final appearance uh but yeah yeah you know don't really know what's gonna happen in this we don't really know anything about it other than a few what costumes look like and, and uh, you know, uh, certain characters. Fuck it. I'll, I'll I'll say it now, just to get it off my chest. But I'm going to say it when we, when we watch the movie in November. Anyway, I don't care too much for Michael Keaton's Batman. Got to be honest. Oh, whoa, 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 oh. All right, he's fine. He's good. He's a good Batman. Don't, uh, don't get me wrong. So it's not like he's a George Clooney or anything. But yeah, I I mean, still prefer Ben Affleck. But if it's going to be another Batman, Michael Keaton's kind of the older Batman. If they kind of want to lead this into, I mean, like, I know Batman we got to do an older Batman, Batman, but like if we got to do another Batman, I mean, I wouldn't mind Christian Bale again. He can trap the voice yeah. over Keaton. I'm just saying. Uh, Christian Bale got, got out of DC when it was good for him. He's yeah, he got out, out of Marvel. He's now Marvel. Everyone else who gets trapped in, into DC, they're all fucked now. But yeah, no, seriously. Me what am I actually excited for this movie? Uh, Supergirl. Uh, I, I've seen the set photos. You know, it looks like it could be interesting. I'm curious how much of a uh, role she has. As for the Flash character himself, I don't give a shit. I don't. Yeah, <laughs> I don't. And it's going to be two yeah. of them. And you remember, when there's always two, it's always better. Remember Ray, Ray Liotta and the Many Saints of Newark. <sighs> what did that? I did that I'm reference just for you. My bad for that. Fucking hate Ray Liotta. Goddamn. Right, well, well, you well, know what? Well, yeah, while well, Mike uh, just sits in the corner thinking about Ray, Ray Liotta in that film. Well, um, why don't you tell me about your number three then, huh? Yeah, sure. No, of course. Of course. Uh, I, I got to lighten the mood here after, you know, what we're talking about basically the death of the DCEU or well, the Snyderverse, yes. as people like to call but, it. Uh, somehow I'm still looking forward to seeing it just to see how they do it. Well, so, yeah, yeah, sometimes you have a sick mind. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, I like to uh, suffer every now and then. I'm going for more of a crowd pleaser on this one. Mission Impossible 7. Uh, I think what, what last one was uh, 2018, I think. Yeah, it was 2018. So we're looking at four years since the last film. It's been delayed a few times, obviously, during the pandemic. Obviously, this film will be partially famous due to Tom Cruise's rifle uh, outburst on set about people not following protocols. But hey, we are going to get crazy stunts. I'm kind of curious how they continue the story. I do hope it's not a you need to do this mission outside government, you know, da, 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 you're on the run. Because that kind of seems to be the last three movies or like every movie. Yeah, I, think, I think we're going to get that again. Gonna be I'm kind of hoping like, can he just work with a government official? But to be fair, he worked with Alec Baldwin and he died. So I don't know. <laughs> yeah, he died in the well, last one. Uh, and hey, look. Apparently, Alec Baldwin's been doing some killing himself these days. Oh, sorry, too soon. Yeah, yeah a little too soon. You know, let's let's see what the facts come out. That's a, that, that's that's a tragic story right there. It is, but Alec but Baldwin if he did actually murder her, her on purpose, he is a piece of shit. No, I don't think he did it on purpose. I just think he's an idiot and doesn't know how to handle a firearm responsibly, whether or not you think it's loaded or not. He's well, clearly, a, a lot of people on that set did not know how to load handle correct loaded and firearm. That's a bigger problem in the industry. And that's yes. what happened to Brendan Lee. Exactly. Same, same fucking thing happened to him. But people forget and people lapse. And then that's why we have these tragedies that happen. Yeah. Something that easily should not have happened. Uh, but yep. Yeah, love the cast of Mission Impossible 7. Not against somehow pulling some magic and getting Henry Cavill back from the dead. Yeah. But hey. Good, good luck. Good luck. <laughs> Well, I mean, he's not doing Superman anymore. He can grow the mustache back freely. Uh, yeah, there's no mustache clause anymore. Fuck it. Uh, but he's in The Witcher, so that might screw up uh, Gerald's game there. Oh, come so, on. Uh, I can't, you, we all know that here's a wig. So, so imagine Gerald with a mustache. Is what I'm saying. Oh, Henry Cavill character comes back with the black mustache, but the long white hair. And everyone just plays it serious. 
cinematic gold to me. Uh, what do you got? Absolutely gold. Well, we're not going to spend too much time talking about this because we already did. It's Doctor Strange of the Multiverse of Madness. Pretty much excited for the same reasons you are. I'm excited to see like a darker version of Marvel because it does look like it's going to be a darker film, especially with the Scarlet Witch being mm-hmm. the way she is now. So I, I want to see if they're going to make her the villain and uh, how they're going to start fixing the universe. That's Oh, you, you, oh, you assume they're fixing it. Oh, look at that. You think they're fixing the universe. This is their next 10-year plan, man. Yeah, I know, but you got you to gotta think they're going to somehow try to fix it. I mean, try. I think they succeed. Yeah, if Doctor Strange is actually going to go up against Scarlet Witch, he's got a tough fight again. I, I of him, you know? He does. She all she's been doing, all she's been doing since last year is reading that book. She's been practicing. Yeah. And what's he been doing? Helping Spider-Man fuck shit up? Yeah, yeah, exactly. He's playing his fucking more shit up. <laughs> and there ain't no TVA that pruned this timeline. It's going to get out of control. Yeah, you that's know, how it goes, man. So it's all Loki's fault. He's a trickster, that one. Yeah, I, I kind of do hope he shows up in the film, even like a cameo. Like, I feel like since the multiverse broke with his series, him and Sylvie got to make like two minute cameo or something. Nah, Loki and Owen Wilson. Just walks in. Wow, you're the Scarlet Witch. Or how about just the mess with everyone in theater? They play like Loki's theme song, and you think he's about to show up, and it's Alligator Loki. Nice. Doctor Strange is like, what the hell is this? And then Wong's like, want you, you know, multiverse man. And that's it. That's it. Tom Hiddleston does not show up at all. And they just carry around Alligator Loki. They, they see uh, Wanda in the final battle and just throw Alligator Loki. Come on, do something. <laughs> yep. Uh, let uh, me hear your all right. little uh, My number two is uh, Babylon. And I've been looking forward to this one for a while. So Damien Chanzel, obviously, director of Whiplash, La La Land. Period piece, 1920s Hollywood. With Brad Pitt and Margot Robbie starring, co-leads, and Tobey Maguire as a supporting role. And a producer on the film, turns out. Interesting. Uh, I'm, I'm a fan of the director since La La Land. Obviously, we're both fans of Brad Pitt. And they got a pretty interesting cast together. I think Paramount is lucky that they're financing this film. It looks like they have a hit on their hands and possibly an Oscar contender, which they kind of need badly. Um, but yeah, no, this very this is going to be a late December release. So I'm cutting it real close. Like any delay up until now it would have knocked us off the place. But yeah, yeah, looking forward to it. I mean, it sounds interesting. I'm definitely mm-hmm. have to look it up after this. But I don't think it's as interesting as the real, uh, I can't even say the real hero of 2022. That's a blatant lie. But Thor, Love and Thunder. I'm surprised it's not on your list. Uh, uh, granted, we didn't, we didn't get it. We don't, we know nothing about this film. It's true. I'm solely riding high on the Ragnarok magic. Because let's be honest, Taika is fucking great. He's an awesome director. Thor Love and Thunder, Jojo Rabbit, what we do in the shadows. So far, majority of things this man touches turn into gold. So if they're continuing with a more comedy action Thor, I think it's going to be great. Which I think it kind of works better for the character than the super serious. Yeah, I mean, it's well known, obviously, <clears throat> you know, post Riding Rock, like that's where like Chris Hemsworth, you know, kind of fell in love with the character again and like putting in the work to, to get the body to play that role. Because obviously we know from like Dark World Adventures too, he's kind of he's kind of done with that stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I think you're throwing the towel until Tychus got in there. I, I think with Riding Rock, Riding Rock shows the formula you got to do with Thor because he is an all powerful guy. So have good action, have a couple serious moments, obviously, but throw in some jokes. You know, like, I feel super dark, serious. <clears throat> that works for more vulnerable superheroes. You know, not that Iron Man had a super serious, like, dark film, but, like, he's just a normal person in a uh, you know, suit of armor. He could be easily killed. Thor yeah, well, cannot. Captain, Captain America, too. Those were darker. Yeah, that's that darker, and he still had, super, you know, superhuman abilities. Yeah, but Thor didn't need to be dark. No. Yeah, I mean, it was close to my list. If we did a top 10, it would be on my list. I guess part of my thing is 
It's just kind of, it's not knowing anything, know but anything about it. Yeah. yeah, it's like, cool, Jane's coming back. You know, she's going to be Thor as well. How are they going to handle that storyline? I'm curious. And then look, Christian Bale's a villain. That's going to be great. But like, I still don't even know what he looks like. Is he just going to be full CGI? And it's the voice of Christian Bale? Or is it going to be some makeup? Bit of both? Like, I know nothing. Yeah. That's partly the reason why I didn't make my number one. Yeah. Just <laughs> hit nothing was dethroning this. Right. Tyler, I'm assuming you have the same number one. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'll, I'll let you continue because we do have the same number one. Uh, it's going to be the Batman. Yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be the Batman. Uh, you know, not many directors have made me eat my words, but Matt Reeves, I tip my hat to you, sir, because I was not a fan of the direction he was going. But now I'm, I'm on, I'm on the train. It looks dark. It looks gritty. It looks fucking brutal. Yeah. This is going to be an amazing Batman film and just an amazing film in general. See, now obviously I will say this again when the film comes out and assuming it's good, I'm going to tell you to eat your words because I told you having watched the second and third apes film that he can direct a great film. Those were pretty good films and they were about apes. All right. It's not the biggest franchise, right? Where you can have a lot of depth. So for him to take on Batman, I knew he was a solid pick. And from everything we've seen so far, he seems to be doing an outstanding job. Yeah, he does. And unlike the DCEU, which keeps getting messed up by Warner Brothers, he's building his own neat little universe on his side. He's got his own movie. He's got a Penguin TV show on HBO Max. He's building a Gotham TV show for Gotham PD. And obviously there's going to be the Batman sequel. So, hey, you know, while the DCEU is going up in flames, more or less, at least we got some new Batman content to keep us satisfied for now. Yeah, because they, they did us dirty. As, as we cry into our, you know, in our Superman Halloween suits. <laughs> yeah, that we no longer. But there will be no Man of Steel 2. I think to add just a little more substantive comments, we, we're not liking it just because it looks dark and it looks gritty. Personally, I think starting off with Riddler good. is good. Paul Dano is a great actor to him he definitely is. be a smart psychopath and his voice loving it so far costume is good it just also feels more grounded the suits the costumes it all feels more grounded kind of like dark knight trilogy ish like so yeah. you feel like some of the stuff could happen it also kind of helps like his battle bill it's just basically a ripped apart and souped up like muscle car like it's not a yeah. it's not a high-tech vehicle it doesn't exist it's not the bat flying thing that, you know, from Dark Knight Rises. Like, it's something you see you see it, and you're like, yeah, I could build it with a lot of money. I could build it. Yeah, it's definitely a more realistic take, which is what I'm also a fan of, because mm-hmm. that's kind of what made the Nolan first. Yeah. You know, call that now. Work so well is that it was grounded, and it was a little bit darker. There was no huge jokes every now and again, but... I'm also liking the adding in Catwoman early. I think a missed mm-hmm. thing for Nolan trilogy is Catwoman was kind of thrown in at the end because, well, she's a famous character, but, you know, at least in comics and in the animated movies, a big part of it is their relationship through the different events. So you throw her in early, you have a full trilogy around it. I think that works a lot better. Yeah, I could see it. Yeah. Now, the question is, do you think they throw a Robin in this Batman universe? I feel if they do it, it's it's got to be a third pick. Really? Well, haven't they already established like he's only like two or three years on a job right now? Like he's still pretty early. It kind of yeah. feels weird. I feel, I feel like he's got to be like five, ten years in to have a Robin. Like this movie is still very much him figuring out the difference between Bruce Wayne and Batman. Like they've made that kind of clear. So I feel like if they go Robin, you got to go third film because you need the second film to be I know who I am. You know, you're dealing with this crisis, yeah. whoever it may be. And then the third film is, it kind of depends what they want. Are they doing a fourth film? Do they want to build a sequel with Robin taking the lead? Something like that. That's where you're like, that's where it kind of gets fishy too. Because like, is it going to be like, what, a 30, 35 year old Batman and like a 10 year old Robin, 15 year old Robin? Like, I, I want to see the Bat family in live action done properly, not Batman and Robin. Yeah. But I just don't know how you do it. That's kind of hard. It, it takes a lot of time, but mm-hmm. that, that's kind of the thing. 
that they dance around because the, the comic it takes place so you know decades so the audience knows it hasn't been that long yeah. in comic universe that he's gotten a second Robin but the timeline between you know when he ad- adopts Nightwing like how old is he really I think he was in his like mid I think he was in his mid to late 20s I want to say and then Jason Todd was like in his like early 30s yeah I, I think what makes this hard is that like obviously the fans you need dedication well, for yeah. a long period of time of one actor to keep doing it yeah that's thing. like you got to sell to a, movie a, lot audience. Of time, a lot of time jumps you could do that like one movie's like five years later shit like that well see the thing is i'm obviously we haven't seen a movie yet but they're very like based on what we've seen so far this doesn't seem like the kind of bruce wayne that would adopt anyone no not really not yet not yet but yeah the batman looks fucking fantastic please be good if you are not good i will be disappointed but speaking of disappointments what movies are you guys hyped on seeing hopefully they won't be disappointments as always feel free to let us know at entertainment expansion you can find us on instagram facebook and youtube as always thank you for listening